In the previous two videos, we got to talk a little bit about what gut pneumonia is, how it's diagnosed, how we can prevent it, and then a little bit more in depth about the pathophysiology of pneumonia, how it takes place, and some of the complications that it can cause if it's not treated. Well, in that vein, let's talk a little bit about some of the ways to treat pneumonia. The mainstay of pneumonia treatment, one of the most important aspects, is antibiotics. So when the patient first presents with pneumonia, uh, you're going to have them start out on a broad spectrum antibiotic. And this is because uh, at, in the beginning, you don't really know what the organis organism that's causing the pneumonia is. So you want to aim broad, take a kind of shotgun approach so that you're knocking down whatever it is. Um, but once your culture and sensitivity comes back, you're usually able to narrow down an organism and find out what antibiotics, what particular um, medications that that organism is susceptible to. And then you're going to move to a narrow approach. And this will help prevent, uh, you know, this will help kill it off as, as strongly as possible, as quickly as possible, but also help prevent um, antibiotic resistant organisms from developing. Another mainstay of pneumonia treatment is oxygen. So with supplemental oxygen, you can go anywhere from a nasal cannula, you know, you've got little prongs in the nose. And you know, that's pretty well tolerated usually all the way up to intubation and 100% uh, fraction of inspired oxygen by uh, intubation. And in the middle you have lots of other modalities you can use from uh, regular masks to non-rebreather masks to things called venturi masks. You have all kinds of stuff you can use trying to deliver um, the right amount of oxygen in the uh, most comfortable and le least invasive way to the patient to maintain um, their respiratory status. Some of the other uh, aspects of treating pneumonia, some of the other modalities that we use that are maybe not quite as um, essential as antibiotics and oxygen, but are, also, but are used pretty frequently, are these. We have bronchodilators. Uh, bronchodilators are um, typically inhaled medications, although they can be, uh, you, know, you can bronchodilate with, um, with injections of different agents as well. But for this, case, you know, for this we'll talk about things like albuterol that are, um, inhaled medications, they're vaporized and breathed in by the patient, and they open up the airway, the uh, airways, and they prevent vasospasm, uh, sorry, prevent uh, bronchospasm. So this will help the um, patient get more air down into the lungs and also help prevent the airways from spasming, which would only add insult to injury in the patient that's already not breathing at 100%. Mucolytics, so these are medications also often um, uh, vaporized and inhaled by the patient that uh, are supposed to help break up secretions. So part of the problem with pneumonia is you often have these, a uh, patient often has these secretions that are sitting down in the chest. They are pretty deep down in the airways and, and, um, and alveoli. Breathing in these mucolytics helps supposed to kind of thin them and break them, help the patient expectorate, cough them back out. Um, and to clear them. Analgesics, so pain meds, because pneumonia can be painful. This is often um, forgotten uh, in the focus on oxygenation, ventilation, treatment with antibiotics. You know, we often forget that pneumonia can be a very painful condition. We talked about that pleuritic chest pain in the, um, in the first video. So this can be anything from, from Tylenol, Tylenol to um, opioids depending on the patient they're still have. And then finally, you have um, antipyretics medications that we give to reduce fever. So fever can be very high um, in these patients, and a high fever can drive up your heart rate. The patient might just be very uncomfortable from the fever. Um, and in a, especially in, um, in children, you may have fever that is could, could put them at risk for um, seizures, you know, febrile seizures. So we give medications such as acetaminophen again, And said, on top of the pharmacological approaches to the treatment of pneumonia, there's a whole host of non-pharmacological interventions that are important um, for treating pneumonia. Now, most of these things are actually things that uh, nursing can initiate and maintain, and they're important to talk about. So, first of all, positioning. So, in the acute phase of uh, pneumonia, really, when the patient's really having a hard time breathing, you want to position for comfort. Right, you want to allow them to assume whatever position is most comfortable, they're having uh, the most 
ease breathing. Oftentimes this is with the head of a bed up, you know, 30 degrees in a semi-fowler's semi position, right? So basically just sitting up. Uh, this will allow um, the abdominal cavity to kind of hang down and not push up on the chest and push up on the lungs. Makes breathing a little bit easier. Also makes it easier to have for them to clear some of their secretions. And especially with children, you really want to allow them to just take whatever position works best for them to, to maintain comfort and ease of breathing. Another um, mainstay of treatment of pneumonia of non-pharmacological treatment is pulmonary toilet. Now this is both can be a nursing intervention and a respiratory therapist intervention. Things like coughing and deep breathing to help clear secretions and to help open up um, collapsed areas of the lungs is, are really important, especially in patients who may have been on ventilation and not very mobile for long periods of time. Chest physiotherapy, often done by respiratory therapists, can help break up secretions. This can be done with kind of manual physiotherapy where they have, it looks like a little suction cup almost, that they're bouncing on the back and chest of the patient to um, just use physical forces to break up those uh, consolidations. And it can also be done, especially in pediatric patients, you see um, things like a chest physi physiotherapy vest that is kind of has a, a, um, a attached to a motor or a pneumatic system that kind of pumps and bounces the chest around a little bit to help break up those secretions. These can actually be pretty effective in helping the patient um, mobilize those secretions out. And then suction for patients when they're really having a hard time, their, their secretions are building up to the point that they're interfering with breathing. We can go down and do uh, NT, nasotracheal suctioning, um, or in an intubated patient, you would have um, endotracheal, endotracheal through their ET tube, endotracheal suctioning. And this can help clear out and just kind of get down in there and um, suck out some of that gunk. Mobility is a very important aspect of treating pneumonia. Just like preventing pneumonia, if you can get the patient um, moving earlier, even if it's just turning, so you're gonna start with, with turns, then you're gonna be going to uh, like dangling at the edge of the bed, then, then to uh, out of bed to chair, and eventually ambulating. All of these things and taking these actions will help the patient clear their secretions, maintain a more patent airway, and recover from pneumonia much more quickly than if you just let them lay in bed and do nothing. Uh, fluids, so another very um, essential um, strategy for helping clear the secretions is to increase fluids. So you're really increasing them um, much higher than you would in other patients. I mean, as long as there's no other contraindications to them tolerating this fluid increase. But by increasing the fluids, you thin the secretions. It's just like when you're, um, when you're really dehydrated, say you've been out um, you know, in the desert or out uh, skiing where it's really dry, cold air, and you just feel that gunk in your mouth, your secretions are really thick and tenacious. Well, same thing for these patients. If you can, th you can thin their secretions by increasing fluids, then it makes all this other stuff you're doing to get those secretions out much more effective. Uh, nutrition, so these patients are expending a lot of energy breathing, much more than they would be normally. So to support that expenditure of energy, you wanna increase calories and you wanna increase protein intake. This is not the time to put your uh, patient on a diet. They need all the energy they can get to maintain the um, level of exertion that they have to just to breathe. And then, you know, I put in here monitor because you may have a patient coming into your ED gets uh, with pneumonia when they when they're first coming in. It's not, it's it's there and it's enough to admit them, but it's not um, critical. But by the time you know they're an hour or two into their admission, their respiratory status may be deteriorating. They may start to um, change their level of consciousness. Their their um, oxygen saturation on monitor might be dropping. So you really want to be monitoring these patients carefully, monitoring their mental status, monitoring their work of breathing. Because if you see that any of these signs are deteriorating, you want to take early steps to correct them instead of waiting for um, full respiratory failure to try to you know, get, deal with it once you're already behind. Uh, and if you, can, if you can maintain close monitoring while doing all these other things, you're going to have the best chance of helping that patient recover from pneumonia 